11 and 12. I'm only going to read a couple of verses of that. Uh, kind of another sign of me doing a little different. I got two titles for this song. One title, is, which is kind of what it should be, and the other one is kind of what came to me as I was thinking about this. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their net. And so my two titles, one, uh, he's up to more than you think, he being Jesus. And then the second one, which launch are you on? It's actually a lot more launches in this passage than you think. Tell you maybe this story is about Jesus. I mean, really. Tell you that, really. Tell me. This story is about Jesus. Since it's about Jesus, what happens in this story is really not unusual. The occurrences that we see that are miraculous, that are unexpected, since it's about Jesus, it's really not unusual because we're actually talking about Jesus' directed activity rather than human ingenuity and expertise. This story is really about Jesus. I like Jesus' stories because there is no messiness in Jesus' stories. When we call Jesus to our stories, there's usually some mess. Do y'all call Jesus when you don't have any mess? I mean, some of y'all might do. But usually, when we call him alongside of us, there's a little drama going on. There's a little stuff that we've gotten into, somebody else has gotten us into. I like Jesus' story because I don't have to watch out for, look for the drama and when it's going to hit me, when the shoe's going to drop, and all of that other stuff. The wow factor of Jesus is wrong. It's not unusual. He's doing some amazing things, and it's just what he does. And so at the opening of the story, Jesus was teaching a crowd by the lake. When he saw two boats at the edge of the water, he was teaching a crowd right there. They were crowding into him. And then he asked when he saw the boats pull up, there was no longer using them. The people who owned them were no longer using them. He asked why did the owners if he could use the boat. And so what he asked the owner to do is to push out a little bit from the water's edge. Now what he was doing was really something that all of us should have the intelligence and wisdom to do. When there's people that are really close to you and you're trying to talk to them, the people in the back probably they're not going to hear you. Because the sound is muffled because everyone is so close. But if you can get a little distance, your voice will actually project that much farther. And probably most people, if you kind of create a natural amphitheater with the lake there, and ain't nobody going to crowd up on Jesus because they got to walk through some water to do that. Yeah. Right? So that's all he was doing. He was saying, I'm going to use the boat so that I can get a little distance so that more people can actually hear what I'm saying. Because he was teaching, he wanted more people to understand what he was teaching. And so he just needed to get a little room. Tell your neighbor, give me a little room. <laughs> Jesus is always up to more than what we think he's up to. He got into Simon's boat. Simon, James, and John had quit for the day because they had been unsuccessful though they had worked all day long. You ever had any days like that? You worked hard, was imaginative as you possibly could be, and nothing had worked. It didn't mean that you were bad at what you did. If every day is like that, we have problems. But there are some days, even though you're in an area that you're good at, that it just does not work that day. They caught nothing. They were good fishermen. I don't know they were good fishermen. They had two boats. You don't buy two boats if you're not any good at what you're doing. <laughs> they had equipment. They took care of their equipment. They were washing their nets in expectation that they were actually going to go back and do what they were good at. They were good fishermen. So there wasn't anything wrong with their skill. They just hadn't had a bad day. They'd given up for the day, just for the day. Too bad on a day fishing. Tell you maybe sometimes a bad day can become your best day. The 
once where nothing was caught was the first launch. Jesus got into the boat, Simon's boat, and told him, put out a little bit from the church. You know that Jesus told him. He didn't ask him anything. He just got into the boat, told the owner, put out from the shore. The boat made things better for Jesus. The fishing boat, which had failed at facilitating this primary function to catch fish, was perfect at putting distance between him and the crowd that had gathered so that he could project his voice. He needed a barrier between him and them to keep them at a distance, allowing more people to see and hear. The boat made it possible to create a natural amphitheater. The crowd could hear and see clearly. And all of us know we do better when we can both see and hear. Meanwhile, I need you to understand Simon and Jesus. Sometimes God wants to use us and our property and our property at what seems like the worst possible moments. Simon had been working all day long. It had been a long, hard, and unsuccessful day. He'd gotten off his boat, off his job, and was very likely getting ready to go home and lick his wound. Simon was on the shore, clocking out, washing his nets. And that's when Jesus said, come help me. Jesus told him because he wanted to turn his bad day into his best day. Some of us think that when Jesus shows up in our bad moments, he just wants to make things worse for us. He actually does not show up to make things worse. He shows up to turn things around in ways that are unimaginable for us. Just when we're about to give up, Jesus tells us, don't give up because I got something better in store for you. Y'all know it's hard not to give up on bad days. It's hard to do just one more thing when things have already been bad enough. And you've tried everything that you know and nothing has worked. It's hard not to give up. But that's exactly what Jesus told him. Don't give up. Don't quit. I got more for you. Most of us want to quit and just start again the next day. Wake up with the sunshine. But we cannot quit yet. Tell your neighbor, don't quit yet. God is up to more than what you think it is. Amen. Tell him. So God is up to more than what you think he is. In that moment, Simon was at his best. He forgot about conventional wisdom and did what Jesus told him to do. What about you? Have you done what Jesus told you to do? Are you tired? Too tired? Are you busy? Too busy? Are you angry? Too angry? Are you scared? Too scared? What do you do when Jesus tells you? When Jesus finishes using our person and our property, he actually always pays us. If he asks us to do something out of the ordinary, he always pays us. He doesn't pay us up front, but he pays us when we respond. Some of us want to stop Jesus before he actually finishes. We want him to stop in the middle of what he's doing to tend to us and lick our, help us lick our wounds and heal us. But we need to let him finish doing what he wants to do, and then he will bless us. He told them, launch out into deep water after he had finished, finished for a catch. Now understand, you remember what I said earlier, Simon was good at what he did? Since he was good at what he did, he knew it was useless for him to go back, back out again. There's a lot of people who characterize this, say it was too dark and all those kind of stuff. The point is, Simon knew what he was doing, and he'd done all that he could do. And here is somebody who was not a fisherman. Y'all know Jesus was not a fisherman. Someone who was not a fisherman telling him to go back out. He put up an argument. Most of us would. Somebody don't have any idea about your business. They haven't studied for it. They don't even have a street cred about what you're doing. Tell you to do something after you try it all long, all day long. What you gonna tell them? Y'all know what y'all gonna tell them. <laughs> <laughs> so he protested. But then something clicked in him. Even though the words sounded like words that 
were meaningless from somebody who did not know what they were talking about. There was something about the sound that he heard that made him say, Nevertheless, at your word. <coughs> I'm going to do what you told me to do. So he launched out into the deep water and as he was in the deep water, he dropped uh, he has cleaned nets down into the deep water. It's going to mean he's going to have to clean his nets again. They were already clean. He dropped his clean nets down in the deep water. And so many fish came into the nets. He actually had to call his partners, whose boat was still docked, to come help him. And even after both boats, both nets, had pulled the fish in, both boats still came close to sinking. They were amazed. When they said go away from me, they didn't really mean go away from me. What they were really talking about, I ain't seen nobody like you before. I know I'm using bad English, but I want y'all to get what I'm talking about. <laughs> I haven't seen anybody like you. No one who can do what you just did. I have not seen it. And Simon fell at his feet, expressed great gratitude and great awe and whose presence they were in, and unfortunately too many of us stop at this point of the story. We see the miracle of the catch of fish, and that's what we want. Up to this point, I need you to understand that what was happening is Simon was letting Jesus conduct Simon's business. It was Simon's business, Jesus was just in charge of Simon's business. How many of y'all know that when Jesus is in charge, of your business, it'll do well, even though what he might tell you to do may not be conventional wisdom, it'll work. Amen. Not only will it work, but it'll work better than anything else that you've ever imagined. Y'all know that? When Jesus is conducting your business, it works well. Too many of us stop at letting Jesus conduct our business. It's actually more that God wants from us than letting him conduct our business. Yes. Can I tell you what the more is? So they pulled in the great hall and they had the boats that were about to sink and they came to the shore. And one of the things that Jesus said to them in their amazement is from this moment forward, you will catch me. And so they got to the shore. Y'all know what they did? They left everything. Y'all know what everything is? Everything includes the amazing catch that they've never caught before. All of the money from the fish that was in the boat that was going to be more than they ever made in their life, they left that as well and followed Jesus. Too many of us stop at wanting Jesus to bless us in what we are doing. What we are good at. Peter's lunch before Jesus showed up. 
a little distance away from the shore, the catch of fish, the launch out to the catch of fish, and the launch for Simon, Peter, James, Simon, James, and John when they went to follow Jesus. That's at least five. It ain't about launching. It's really about what Jesus says it's about. Why do us get caught up in the launch? You know why we get caught up in the launch? Because we like for Jesus to show up for our business. We like to look good to everybody else around us. Right? By being so successful at what we're doing, but what Jesus really wants us to do is follow him. Now, he said, you will catch human beings. I'll add his rest for the kingdom of God, for their own good, so that the life can have a far deeper meaning than you ever imagined that it would be. You will become catchers of men. You won't be trying to trick them or pull some kind of okey doke or deceive them or tell them some kind of lies about all of the stuff that God's going to do for them when they come to church. You're just going to follow him and tell them, come see. I really can't tell you what he's going to do for you, but I can tell you this. You are going to be thoroughly and completely amazed by whatever it is. It's going to blow your mind <laughs> if you just follow him. He's really up to more than what you think he is. That's really what I'm trying to wrap my mind around in this moment. I want us to wrap our mind around in this moment. Is we think he's up to about this much. What he's really up to is so much other stuff that is so deeply connected. And there's so many people that are watching and waiting for us to really figure out that Jesus is really God. And that he really knows about our life and when we follow him, it'll just be so much better than what we imagine. We can't see it and we don't want to do it. And we're a little reluctant about doing it. But when we do it, we're amazed about that. We don't talk about the people who were on the boat with Simon, do we? When you read the text, you know that there were people on the boat with Simon. We don't talk about the people who are watching you who are at home, who are in your friendship circle, and what's going to happen with them when you really figure out that what you need to do is follow whatever God is leading you to do. Stop protecting yourself. Anybody of y'all in there protecting yourself? I hear it, I see it all the time. You know, somebody's made me mad, you know, and they constantly talk about me, and you know, I keep a comfortable distance because I don't want to be hurt no more. Or I'm so mad that. Now, I want to jack him up a little bit. I'm sure y'all know <laughs> Right? Or I'm too scared. Or I'm too whatever. All of those are barriers, boundaries, keeping us from the wealth of blessings that God has to pour out. Amen. Yeah. I'm tired of being scared. I'm tired of being afraid. I'm tired of being too busy. I'm tired of being too wise. I mean, whatever. You know, I'm a pretty smart guy. I'm whatever. <laughs> My wisdom gets me far, but it does not get me far. How about yours? What I know about my job gets me far, but it doesn't get me far enough. One thing that I repeat is, I don't know what to do. If you're smart, you say it that too. You know what Jesus come back to and says? You ain't supposed to know what to do. You just want to follow me. That's right. Amen. 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 What I'm asking. Don't be amazed by the big catch. Somebody made a lot of money recently. Came out of recently knowing no. Got a better house. I got one yet. Some, something happened to someone that wasn't un, wasn't expected, but that was good recently. I know. Okay. All right. There we go. Don't be amazed by that. Because that will make us keep chasing that stuff. God got something so much greater than that. Greater blessings come in following him. 
doing what he asked us to do. The world will open up. And we will be so enriched by the company that we're keeping. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Oh, my God.